Whoops, hold on. Okay. Hi, I'm Mayor Jim Fiorentini. Thanks for joining us. I didn't bring a spare mic, so I'm not sure if you can hear us or not. We're over here with the wastewater treatment plant on South Porter Street. I'm willing to bet that most of you have never seen this before. And I'm with Isaiah Lewis, who's the plant manager, and I wonder if you can uh, tell us a little bit about what we're doing. So we installed a new synthetic medium. It's called a BioRim filter. Um, so we're pulling air mainly from three sections, the end of the primary tanks, right in front of, and then the dewatering garage is over that way and then our screening room. So those areas were identified as some of the most odorous areas when we did our phase one engineering studies. All of this air gets pulled over into a filter over that way that's attached to a humidification system. The air gets humidified, comes up and goes through the bed and there's a biomass that's built up in there and the microorganisms help filter the, the air. How much should we spend on the odor control system right there? We're at around five and a half million. You know, five million here, five million there. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon you're talking real money. Yeah. But was it worth it? So far, so good. I've taken one odor complaint this entire year, and that was from before the system was online. And how many have we had since it went off? First of all, when did it go online? Uh, it's been online for about a month and a half. Have we had any complaints since then? No complaints and very, very low flows, which can create a lot of odors. What do you mean low flows? So this plant is an average 10 million gallon per day plant. Okay. Uh, currently we're taking in around 6 million gallons. Does that reduce odor in and of itself? So that makes the odors worse. Oh, it makes it worse? Right. So with okay. the temperatures in the summer, it produces a lot of H2S gas. Okay. And the low flows will bring that in, so it's more difficult to treat it during low flow and high So even in the toughest times, in other words, uh, we've greatly reduced the odors. We're doing well right now, yes. Let's take a trip up there to see that tank. And uh, I've got to say, the last time I was here, it stunk. <laughs> I don't smell anything now. We're doing much better. So come on up. So this is a primary tank that's empty, uh, raw wastewater flows through here. The idea is to slow down the flow of it. The heavier particles sink to the ground and they get pushed that way and pumped out into a different tank. And what will not settle overflows this tank into the aeration basins where all the microorganisms work. And did you do anything in this tank? Here? We did not. We only we covered the top of these tanks because this was identified as one of the most odorous areas. And then we draw from each of the three tanks. Let's go over here. So these tanks are full. So getting close enough so they can hear. Why don't you explain to our listeners? Explain to our listeners what this tank here does. So it's called a primary tank, and it's designed to take out settleable solids. So anything that comes into the plant that will settle gets pumped out of here, and that's the easiest part of our job because we don't have to add anything or do anything. I wish I knew if people could hear us or not. Yeah. I suspect they can't. But well, yeah. No one's saying they can't. They well, usually do. Good, good. Okay. So this is, looks like a very low-tech device. It's just water that goes into a tank. That is correct. It's controlled. The water flow is controlled by gates coming in, and then we have pumps down at the bottom of the far end of the tank that pumps out everything that's pushed that way. Okay. And These flights move very, very slowly. You can barely see it. And what did you do here to reduce odor? We haven't done anything but this. So it, uh, to this being the bottom. The right. Bottom. So underneath us is a channel that flows that way. And that's where you were getting a lot of odor. As it comes, so there's, a, there's a, a weir, as we call it, over the edge, so it drops about a foot and a half, and aerosolizes, and it creates some odors. And so by covering this, we try to 
tried to trap the air releasing to the atmosphere. So just to go back a little, you did an engineering study that showed yeah. where the odors were coming from. Correct. And you attacked those areas. That is correct. Now these pipes weren't here before. No, they were not. Why don't you tell us about those? So these they're close enough so we can read. This is all the ductwork uh, that was put in recently. So as you can see, there's three inlets where it draws off of each tank and pulls into a common line all the way over to the biofilter. Okay. Uh, my what is this device up here? Says, that's a sample. That's, that's not new. Oh, okay. Is there anything else new up here that we should say? There is not, no. Uh, what no. is this other tank? It's the same thing. There's three primary tanks. We're running two of them right now. Uh, depending on season flow, we'll run two or three, or sometimes, if there's maintenance issues, even one. Okay. And what do we have? What else did you do over there? It's a ways away and to walk over will blur our listeners. But first of all, what is that device right there, the electrical device? Uh, this is for the tank. These are controls for your tippers. So okay. Okay. nothing to do with odor control. Now what about the big amount of construction you see over there with those big pipes? So that mm -hmm. is the actual filter itself. That's where the air is being drawn through. We had some. Is that all moved? That's all moved. Yeah. And that's the that's the bulk of where the, where the money is. That's the biggest part of the... Isaiah, we have a question. Somebody would like to know what chemical composition is the biofilter. Do you know the answer to that? It's, it's a, like a synthetic media. It's called BioRem. I think that's been down in Pennsylvania, I want to say. Yeah, it's or, almost like a ceramic. Yeah. Isaiah, let's take a walk over to where the filter is. And, uh, uh, you want to be patient for a minute? We'll be good in a minute. Yeah, they seem to be hearing us. They're asking questions. Now, when this came up before the city council, Isaiah and Bob, Bob Ward is with us, the wastewater director. Uh, there was, if you remember, Bob, quite a discussion at the council level on whether this would be adequate or whether we needed to spend another 20 or 30 million to actually cover all the tanks. What are your thoughts now that we've done the project? So, is this adequate? I believe it's adequate. With odors, it all starts with good housekeeping, and that includes industries and making sure we're getting out and making sure people are doing the things that they need to do. That helps us a lot here. And then a system like this has the ability to draw quite a bit of air. And, and... I know, and I just for the attention of our viewers, I know this is expensive. It does make rates go up. We'll talk about that in a minute. But what it also does is boost the property values all along the river. Very, very difficult for any, anybody to want to live near a waste treatment plant. You eliminate the odors and you greatly reduce that problem. So what have we got here? So this is the filter itself. Uh, so this is, a, this is a bed of synthetic media. It's about 10 feet deep. Let's go on up and see it. The air is drawn through here and we take certain pressure readings and uh, gas level readings and things like that to make sure we're working properly. And the air gets humidified in there with, with the sprayers inside this tank. Now, I don't smell anything here. Right, and so the air is released through the bottom of this tank up through the media. And, uh, and the biomass that? captures on its way. And this looks like gravel on the top. It does look like gravel, yes. Is it? No, it's, it's a synthetic engineered media. Okay. So this isn't really all that much different than filters you put into it's, your house. It's not it? right. Uh, it's a little more expensive. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't put too many $5 million filters in right. my house. But uh, it's the same concept. But this to, this media, so we on the other side of the plant, we have a wood chip biofilter, which serves the same purpose. But the wood chips break down fast, and we have to replace it every five to seven years. With this, they guarantee us at least 10 years of media life, and we visited plants that have had this installed for 15 years without ever changing the media. We get uh, every summer, I'd be bombarded with complaints. Me too. The good <laughs> you too. Yeah. How many complaints would you get in the course of a week or so? Um, in the course of a week, our neighbors are pretty good in understanding. Um, Usually in the summer, take anywhere from 10 to 15 complaints a week. Well, when you say they're good, they just gave up complaining. They ended. Oh, yeah. So it, it was great that we were doing this project because I was able to, you know, 
please bear with us as we're trying to change the way we do things over here and make life a lot easier for we the rest exactly of the We have over there the future site of the rail trail. That's right. going to be a hard section to put in because the rail line doesn't own that. That's owned by National Grid, and uh, they're a lot more difficult to deal with than the railroad is. Anything else uh, either of you want to add, uh, Bob or Isaiah, about the project? Um, no, except everything's going well now. This this area here, this is our dewatering area, which is the most odorous out of all the areas, and we replaced an old, broken down uh, chemical unit in there that was treating odors, and now this does the work of everything in the plant. Well, I want to congratulate you both and your whole crew on a job well done, and it was well worth the investment. Uh, we've uh, made life easier and improved the quality of life for anybody within smelling distance of the plant, <laughs> which isn't just in Bradford. I got a lot of complaints from Riverside also. Yeah. We know in advance it isn't going to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. Right. Even if we spent the $30 million, it wouldn't be perfect. Correct. I have a vacation place down in Florida. They spent the money. They have a big cap on it. And there's still complaints. Right. It's not going to be perfect, but it's one heck of an improvement. Right. So, great. Oh, I can't shake your hands. <laughs> great job. Almost. Sean, do we have any questions online? Um, just the one we answered, so. All right. Folks, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, send them to me, mayor at cityofhaverhill.com. Thanks for tuning in.